Well, if you're in the tourism and hospitality business, you have to be resilient because since 2001, we've either been in decline or recovery 50% of the time. Halifax and Nova Scotia, I think, are on the We have been discovered, but there's still so much more opportunity for us. Welcome to PLACE, the Tourism Industry Association of Nova Scotia's podcast. Our industry is worth $3.2 billion annually and employs over 50,000 Nova Scotians. So this podcast is designed to talk about tourism and the issues and topics that matter. Each episode, we will explore conversations that demonstrate the interconnectivity between tourism and the social, cultural, environmental health of the province. There is no place like Nova Scotia, and we want to ensure every Nova Scotia community benefits from the positive impacts that only tourism can bring. Well, Nova Scotia, like many other provinces, is very much reliant on the tourism industry. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a very significant industry in this province, needless to say. Without tourism, this province would be a, a very bleak place. You know, my wife and I came here this summer for our 30th wedding anniversary, and we covered a lot of ground, got up to Cape Breton and all around Halifax and lots of other parts of, of, of Nova Scotia, and we just love it here. And I think there's... I mean, I can see why the tourism industry here is robust, and we'd like to make it even more robust by getting, um, you know, more workers into those, those open spots. Like many business sectors, access to skilled labor remains a challenge for Nova Scotia's tourism industry. Yet, we have high percentages of people that are not gainfully attached to the workforce. We need to better connect people to opportunities. We also need to innovate by using data management to increase business intelligence and workforce diversity. There is a place in tourism for everyone. Labor is a very complex field, um, and indeed the pandemic did help heighten a number of the challenges that we were facing pre-pandemic. But the kinds of issues we're dealing with really fall into four major categories. One is supply, another is skills, a third we would call barrier, and a fourth is really around reputational damage. So, you know, just to go refer, you know, go through that a little more detail, on the supply side, it's all about shortages. Right now in our sector, there's about 170,000 job vacancies across the five industries that cover the whole gamut across Canada. My name is Philip Mondor. I'm President and CEO of Tourism HR Canada. Tourism HR Canada is a national organization whose mandate is to help address labour market issues in the sector. It's quite a broad mandate. It does include a number of key uh, uh, project activities that we undertake, like labour market research, uh, running the largest certification system in Canada next to apprenticeship, training programs, career promotional programs, all kinds of other activities. So what roles are in most need of being filled? Most of our uh, chronic challenges are at the management and operational levels, trying to fill those roles where we had a fairly sizable departure um, from the pandemic with retirements, etc. So that's where the biggest gap or vacancies are. On the skills front, we have a challenge with our workforce not keeping up with the kinds of skill demands that we need. So about 40% of our workers do not have the skills commensurate with demand. And again, a lot of it happens to be at the management or operational level. And it's all because of the influence of things like digitalization, uh, but also the changing nature of our workforce altogether with the industry shifting in different ways. The third category on workforce mobility barriers uh, includes quite a swath of activities, but everything from lack of housing through inadequate transportation, childcare, um, mobility challenges around immigration systems that serve us effectively, or even learner or student mobility between institutions. So that category is one we share with a lot of other industries in terms of a fundamental challenge, but, but basically it means there are people without jobs in places where there's no employment, where there's lots of room for people to be employed in places where they are not at, like it's the people with jobs, without jobs, without people scenario. Um, it's not an easy one to fix and it's a long burn to, to get that addressed, but the scale of the challenge is very big in our sector. We have sort of disproportionately owned most of that problem. The last category which I mentioned is really uh, a result of the first three in some ways, um, where the industry has earned some reputational damage because 
we were not open for more than two years. Um, it meant that the work was more precarious or not, not necessarily guaranteed paychecks, as people would say. And so with that carries baggage of people wondering whether the stability is there, whether the gainful employment is back, you know, and those kinds of things. So we are, we are still recovering from that scenario when it's not easy because many companies are still very much dealing with great debt that they've carried and other things. So it's, it's an iterative adjustment and, and over time we will see some correction there, but it's, uh, it's one of the challenges. Yes, these challenges are large, but they must be addressed and overcome. It's an industry that has a lot of potential, a lot of growth demand, and, but, but we need the workers. And so that is, it is really a fundamental uh, issue to have to address in order to, to see that growth. And, and what that growth does is it brings stability to a lot of communities, because often the tourism businesses are the anchors to those communities. Of course, it brings a lot of employment. And indeed, it, it does a lot for not just visitors, but for the communities themselves, for, for Nova Scotians, because the services offered, of course, to visitors are the same services that are offered to you know people in the community on a regular basis. So um, tourism plays a very fundamental role in terms of its social license, and it's something that um, you know, is fundamental to, this, to, to enabling communities to thrive, period. And so without tourism, this province would be a, a very bleak place. Luckily, Nova Scotia has some very experienced operators. Expertise that can ensure we maintain and attract a happy, engaged workforce. This sector creates some of the most exciting and attractive careers. And that's something we cannot forget. Um, you know, I think the way hospitality works and is kind of similar to, to any business, quite honestly. You have three pillars, really. Uh, you have your customers, you have your people, your employees, and then you have a financial responsibility. Uh, and I've always seen it as you need a perfect balance between those two. Uh, obviously, the owners would like to see as much finance come in through the door, but if you don't have happy customers and you don't have happy employees, it doesn't really matter what comes through the door. Uh, people won't come back to you. Your customers won't come back. So um, I, I've always believed that treating your customers the best that you can, no matter what the circumstance is for them, uh, going above and beyond their expectations and delivering excellent customer service, will bring them back to your properties. And that is the same for your staff. This is Sean Doucette the general manager of the Hollis Hotel in Halifax, and the regional director of Manga Hotels. So if you treat your staff with respect, if you train your staff, if you give them opportunity, if you celebrate their successes uh, and you treat them well, then you'll certainly get that same uh, customer experience will be delivered to the customers because you've delivered it to your team. So that's probably the most important. And if you do those two really well, the financial side will, will flow through uh, just beside that, right? So e empowerment is, is super important. Let the GSA or the bellman or the cook make a decision to take care of the customer. And um, when staff feel like they can do that, they're going to deliver amazing experiences for our guests. When, when they feel as though, and so you, you have to be careful a little bit uh, because you don't want them to all of a sudden give away the farm, but most staff won't. Uh, and I can honestly say I have only seen a couple of experiences where an empowered staff made a mistake. You sit down with them, you coach them, you, t you teach them so that they don't make the same mistake again, and then you move on. Right now, Nova Scotia is seeing an influx of new immigrants and a new generation of potential talent to drive this sector forward. So my name is Stephanie Cole Brown. I am a student at NACC, Acreley Campus. I am a second year student, actually. I came to Canada from Jamaica to study here in Nova Scotia. I am an island girl. I, I, our country thrive on tourism. We thrive on visitors coming to our island, um, enjoying the beach, enjoying our music, enjoying the people. And when I thought about coming to Canada, to be honest, there was nothing about Canada that I would say people would want to come here except for the opportunity to 
you know, advance. But when I learned about Nova Scotia and the fact that they had beaches and <laughs> And you know the different landscape, the lakes, all of that. I want, and I learned about the fact that you can be a destination marketer. I was enthused about that, and I wanted to learn how it is that I can mar market Nova Scotia, particularly. Innovative labour solutions are not just owned by the young. There is an eager workforce to be found in older generations too. Tim Driver, CEO of Age Friendly Ventures in Boston, Massachusetts. We are focused on uh, several different brands supporting people who are older, older adults, uh, helping them with some of their living needs, working needs, and care needs. And the focus of the, my being here in Halifax today, which is a privilege, um, is to talk about the Certified Age-Friendly Employer Program, where we help employers get certified but also learn how to become more age-friendly. So we've partnered with Tyans and our affiliate here in Halifax called Aging Proactively to develop a pilot around getting employers in the tourism industry certified as age-friendly, making them more available to older workers who are looking for work with employers that welcome them and then also to help those employers find staff to fill shortages. Quite exciting, we started the pilot about a year ago and now we have enough evidence under our belts to be able to say that employers are seeing some results. They're seeing an influx of not only labor coming to their hotels and facilities, but also more customers who like the idea that these organizations are leaning into the idea of being friendly to older adults both as, as customers, but also as workers. Tourism is a natural fit with the older worker cohort. You know, you have a lot of older workers who are looking for work that's um, purposeful and fun and provides flexibility. And tourism checks all of those boxes. It's actually a really good sort of product market fit, if you will. And so that's why this is a natural thing. The pilot has been working so well and that we're, we're seeing this as just the beginning of something that's already very special but making it even bigger and more scalable. Much like has been talked about at this conference about sort of there's a chance here to have exponential growth that really helps Canada at large. I would say the hardest part is the information gap. There are a lot of older workers out there who are discouraged. They're, they've perhaps been involuntarily retired and they haven't found a match with an employer that wants them. And there's an information gap because the truth is there are lots of great jobs in tourism, but there hasn't been a way for the tourism industry yet to fully communicate with those older workers and say, hey, apply here. And so that's one of the things we're trying to accomplish here is to get the message out. The dream scenario, dream scenario is that we are eradicating ageism. That's the dream scenario. And obviously that doesn't just happen overnight, but it will change. It will change if there's enough advocacy out there, but also just enough, enough education out there, because this is really not about charity. This is about employers getting better at what they do by tapping into some of those things you pointed out, like the life experience of older workers who have so much to share and can make the tourism experience an even better one for the people who are, you know, coming to Canada and coming to Nova Scotia. So while we did set up a huge issue at the start of this episode, we can also see a range of innovative solutions and opportunities. We want to leave the last word to Philip Mondon, as his description of tourism's importance is a rallying call to the whole sector. You know, the reality is that I understand the stakes that are at hand here, that how important tourism is to society. It's, it's, more, than, it's more than an industry, you know, that, that's made of fun, as it were. It really is the anchor to communities. It is a gateway for about half of Canadians to get their first job. And they get the skills that really put them on track and a foothold in the workforce. It really fills a strong social mandate other than an economic one, and it's quite unique in that sense. So um, it's quite a lifetime of journey for people with all the flexibility that it brings. So in that sense, it's about enriching lives. So you know, tourism tourism is a fantastic opportunity, and 
and I think is really important to society overall. It's it's really a, um, synonymous with Canadians' identity in terms of, of who we are as, as a people as well. So, you know, without without tourism, you wouldn't have culture thriving the way it is. You wouldn't have the kind of reconciliation we're seeing with Indigenous populations as we're seeing. You wouldn't have rural communities alive. So it's really a fundamental file. Thank you for listening to PLACE, the Tourism Industry Association of Nova Scotia's podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the work we do to support, promote, and celebrate our tourism industry, please visit tieends.org.